For those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Tim Reed. I work for Fireside in, uh, here in Portland. I've been in the industry for 13 years. Started as an installer, a service tech, and I worked my way into sales, eventually into management and marketing and, and team development. That's kind of where I am now. But like I said, I've been blessed to be around some of the best manufacturers and retailers in our industry. And I forge relationships with a lot of people outside of our industry and also people in our industry and some of the markets that have helped um, just kind of grow my knowledge of, of kind of the current climate that we're in right now. So the inspiration for this keynote started a few months ago when I read the January issue of Hard Mill Magazine. And it was given a report on how the year ended, and it was interviewing different dealers for their outlook on 2017. I don't know if you guys remember that one, but it was shocking to say the least. Um, I was dumbfounded at just the ridiculous negativity that was in it. And it just, it felt like there was a tiredness and an apathy that had made its way across the entire country. Like years of cynicism and fatigue was coming out and our industry magazine was publishing to the nation that this was the way it is. Um, so I wanna go to war with that. Uh, what follows is my humble or not so humble assessment of our industry. And it's different than what I'm seeing published in magazines and complained about the trade shows. So. Here's what I believe to be true. Three things. Number one, things have never been better. Period. Things have never been better for us. But we're on the verge of a shift. Because we're on the verge of a shift, we have to intentionally plan for success in the coming years. So those are the three things I'm going to talk about. So number one, things have never been better. I think that if anything is true, things are different now. We're talking about the internet, we're talking about ZNE, there's a lot of things that are up in the air. Things are different, but different doesn't mean worse. So the first reason that I think things have never been better is because of educated consumers. I think the educated consumers are one of the best things that could have ever happened to us. The numbers are actually staggering when we actually dig into how much thought and effort goes into buying one of our products. So studies say that the average consumer spends 20 hours researching online before making a decision on buying a hearth product. And not only that, but because of how much research that they've done online, they go to 1.3 hearth stores before making a buying decision. 1.3. So what's that mean? It means that when they come in to see you or to see me, they're ready to buy. And it means that if I don't sell it to them, it's a guarantee that they're buying it from the next store. The days of B-backs are gone. They're totally gone. And I, I don't care if there's stories about 80-year-old Mrs. Jones that got a quote in the spring and she finally came back in the fall to buy that insert. That's the far minority. The numbers are showing us that people know what they want and they're ready to buy. So what does this mean? It means that us as dealers need to be salespeople and not information givers. So our industry is huge on information, right? BTUs, square footages, efficiency ratings. I mean, there's so much information that's out there. But how often do we actually work on the sales end of it? You know, it's great to have that information, but no one in the world buys a fireplace because it's 37,500 BTUs. They can be turned down to 16,500. They buy it because it's awesome. It makes them feel good. It makes them warm. They can control the heat to be comfortable. That's why they buy it. So we need to get out of the information getting business and get way more in the sales business. And from what I've experienced, there's a lot of places that are good information givers, but mediocre salespeople. And we, we really need to go to war with that. That's how we start to prove our value to manufacturers that are peddling their stuff online. They don't see value in salespeople having it. They don't see value in showroom real estate because it doesn't do anything for them. That's where we need to step up. We need to be the expert. We need to be the salespeople. But the best part of that educated consumers is that we really actually don't have to sell them anything because they already know what they want. Sure, they don't have it all figured out. But if we can establish trust with the consumer, we can affirm the work that they've done to educate themselves, and we can actually become their trusted advisor and work with them to find the right product for their home. That should be our goal. And this is way better than a consumer that you're starting from ground zero with, where they have no clue about anything about budget or about project scope. You know, if that's the case, the sales cycle might take you until next fall because they need four months to assess value, to think about it, decide if the cost is going to be right. But the fact is that our customers are coming into our stores knowing that this is gonna be good for them and that they wanna buy it. That's a really good thing. So we need to be thinking about our jobs similar to a financial advisor. 
So think about this, right? I mean, I know that someday, I don't know if I wanna retire, but if I do wanna retire, I know, I know it's important to have some money saved, right? So right now, I've made a decision with my budget to set aside a certain amount of money for retirement. It's already set aside, I'm gonna spend it. So, I, but I'm doing research because it's a lot of money that's at stake. So I'm researching Roth IRAs, 401ks, mutual funds, real estate, I mean, just you know, all kinds of things that you're gonna be investing in for the future. So what I need is someone to come alongside me. Even though I have all this education, I need to find someone that knows a little bit more than me that can help deploy what I've already set aside. Now, because I'm educated, I should be able to sniff out someone that just wants to take my money. But if I can find a good financial advisor that can affirm the work I've done to educate myself, the decision I've made to do this, and maybe humbly point out where I might be off in my thinking, they can win my trust and I'll allow them to guide where I put my money. That's the way that we need to be thinking about our job. Because the customers have already set aside money for this. I mean, it's there. They're going to spend it. So we need to meet people where they're at. We need to genuinely care about them and then just be really patient in guiding them to what's right. But the same thing with me and my retirement and a financial advisor, it's, it's about them. It's not about me. I mean, everything needs to be about the consumer. We can't make it about us. For so long, our industry's done that, right? It's my way or the highway. I rule with an iron fist. Those, those days are gone. We need to make it about the consumer. And how many consumers do we have come into our stores that are frustrated because the last place they went was rude or made it too confusing? Or, I mean, we've all had situations like that. I can probably point the finger at myself and people that have walked into other stores because of what I've done. I mean, it's just the reality that it happens, but we can't make it confusing for our customers. Just make it easy. Make it so stupidly easy to buy from you that there's no excuse not to. I tell my team that every week in our sales meetings. Make it so stupidly easy to buy from us that there's no excuse not to. It's what we have to do. So educated consumers, terrific. It's one of the best things that can ever happen to us. Can anyone deny that our products are cooler than ever? I mean, is there even a conversation about that? Seriously. I mean, we've dealt with difficult things. You look at EPA regulations, safety screen ordinances, talk of minimum efficiency requirements. But at the end of the day, we've made it through with some of the coolest products imaginable. I mean, look at what we used to sell. Anyone remember your stove? <laughs> How about a nice big set of brass glass doors? How about a Comfort Tech fireplace? Anyone remember those? Mercury switches? I mean, compare that now to an Ortal or a Da Vinci custom fireplace or like a quadrifier wood stove that's thermostatically controlled. Or if you have a Napoleon linear fireplace that you can control from your iPhone. That's nuts. I mean, that's nuts compared to the old days and how things used to be. We've never had such an unbelievable repertoire of products at our disposal. We can fit any need the consumer has, right? Someone comes in, oh, you want a fireplace 24 inches deep? Perfect. Oh, 18 inches deep. Okay, the walls will be a little bit narrower. Yeah, yeah, I've got some to choose from. Oh, you actually, you mean you want to frame it straight into a, a two by six wall? Yeah, I got, I got a couple you can choose from. Uh, linear? Yeah, okay. Clean face? Yep, yep, no problems there. You want, you want a, a pellet stove that has a whisk for quiet mode to make sure that your family's not disturbed by it? Yeah, we can do that. You know, the reality is that we're in the solutions game, and that's a good game to be in. Because people come to us with a problem, and we get to give them a solution. It's crazy how many people are overjoyed to hand over $5,000 when it solves their problem. It's crazy. People love doing it. And not to mention that it transforms their home and their family's experience. I mean, how many of our families have been changed by a fireplace? Mine has, hands down, right? We know that it's awesome. So if we sell fireplaces, the fact is we are in the romance and entertainment industry. It's the industry we're in. Because of that, when you're selling romance and entertainment, in a lot of different customizable situations, we need to know our products really, really well so we can customize the romantic solution that fits what our client needs. And here's the best part, we just talked about this. We don't sell commodity products. You know, you can complain all you want about Home Depot, Lowe's, online retailers. But the reality is that we put fire in people's houses on purpose, and the internet can't do that. We do that. So selling fire 
and warmth and beauty is way better than selling sheetrock or sawdust, right? It's a commodity product. All I care about is the price. Nothing else matters. There's no value in it. But that's not true with us. There's a fun and a cool factor that we sell, and we can't predict that. So I feel like if, if you're not dumbfounded and in awe of just the amazing products out there and how far we've come, there's something that's wrong. We should, we should be staggered at how far we've come and how cool this stuff is. I mean, who would, who would have thought about this a while back when it was just the earth stove and a basic open woods DC fireplace? I mean, we've come a long ways. So, the reason things have never been better, number one, educated consumers. Number two, amazing products. Number three, tired competition. <laughs> If we look around, it is hard to deny this. And it's easy for me to say being the new guy or the young punk, but it doesn't change the fact that a lot of our competition is running on fumes. And it can, it can feel like we're those people, right? It can feel like we're tired. But you think about this. If you're feeling tired, you still came to an industry event. You came to an industry event, you took time aside to invest in growing, to invest in supporting, uh, government affairs efforts that are crucial to our industry. Some of you brought employees that are you're investing in their education. That's, I mean, that's not a tired company. Think of all the people that are too apathetic to come to a once a year gathering. It's crazy. So you may feel tired, but the reality is, I think that we have something that's left in the tank. So if you read that 2016 recap issue of Hearth and Home, there was so much complaining. It was insane. They interviewed dealers from you know, all different parts of the country. And for me, like that was bulletin board material that I was putting up on my wall saying, it's not gonna be me. I was sending it out to my employees just like, can you believe what these people are saying? Like, it's insane. We can't have huge growth every year. And sure, there are setbacks from time to time, but we can either complain about it or we can do something about it. And the fact that a lot of the competition is tired means that most people are just complaining. I mean, I see this constantly. I send my guys to survey a lot of different places in this area of town. And some of the results are embarrassing. I mean, I wouldn't send my wife to go into some of these places alone. But the cool thing is that if you look around at the landscape, at companies that are tired, that are running on fumes, that aren't investing in continued education and efforts like this, it means there's opportunity. A lot of companies are just apathetic. They're bogged down, they're stuck in their own buyer. They're way too stuck to execute change. So for us, we got something left in the tank. If we're hungry and we are willing to go the extra mile, you know what, what's the extra mile look like? Have a clean showroom, right? Uh, maybe you put some thought into its flow and layout. Maybe we train our sales staff to really educate the consumers and be kind to them. Maybe we put some strategy into marketing. If we can do those things, we're gonna see huge success. We are. So, if we look at things objectively and we say, well, our consumers are educated and they know that they want our products, right? That's check one. We add in the unbelievable repertoire of specialized products that bring value to our consumers and solve their problems. And then also you factor in that they can't be installed by Amazon or Home Depot. And also as the icing on the cake, you realize that the average competition is stuck. How could things not be better than ever? I mean, that's. That's the reality that we live in. And we can either step up to that or not. But that's what I believe the situation of our industry is. Part two is this. While I fully believe that things have never been better, we are on the verge of a shift. There's, there's no denying it. We talked about that, I mean, ZNE, we're talking about minimum efficiency ratings, technology is seeping in, we are on the verge of a shift. But I truly believe the market is ready to explode for the few that are willing to go there. You know, just like Mount St. Helens, there was huge, huge devastation with that. But you look at what's come back. You look at that and now, it's beautiful. There has been life where there was destruction before. And uh, I, think that, I think that for us, we can, we can take advantage of this. So first is that there's a changing of the guard, right? So millennials are coming in. There's no stopping it. So it means it's time to step up and be ready. And we're just starting to see it, but in the next 10 years, it's really gonna show. We have to be thinking about the next generation. I know it's easy for me to say, right? <laughs> sure. 
That's fair. But think about this, the pioneers of our industry are aging. And that's an awesome thing. It's really good. Because it means that they've had long and fruitful careers. And it means that they've got an incredible amount of knowledge to be able to pass on to the next generation. So if you're older and seasoned, this is the time to invest in people who are younger than you, that work for you. If you don't have any hire them, there's no way around it. This is investing in your future, right? I mean, maybe, maybe you could hire someone on that one day they buy their business from you and you get a bunch of extra cash flow and can retire and go do something that you wanted to do. It takes time and money to invest in the next generation. We're gonna talk about that in just a little bit with some workforce development ideas. But maybe a younger person can relight the fire that you had in this industry at one time. And if you're younger, this is the time to think about the opportunity that you have. You can define younger however you want. This is the time to invest in the learning because there's people that you work for or that you work with that are older than you that can teach you all kinds of things. You know, maybe if you're younger, you haven't thought about a career in this industry, right? I mean, I, I didn't. Did any of us set out at like age 14 to be like, yeah, I want to get into the hearth industry. Think about selling fireplaces for a living and I'd really like to be a hearth expert. Anyone in here? Yes, what? Yes. That's a perfect example. Not, that's, that's the minority. And that's a blessing. That's a total blessing to have that. A lot of us have not had that, but we've ended up here regardless because there's something incredible about this industry. It's an amazing, amazing industry. But think about this if you're younger. So you didn't think of your career, but you've ended up here regardless. Like, what if you could buy the business someday from the people you work for? You could be your own boss. I mean, that's a, that's a huge dream. So this is the time as a young person that you need to invest in learning. Grow that knowledge base that you have. Grow your experience. But like it or not, millennials are here to stay. In 10 years, they're gonna be running things. No question about it. But if you're older, you're gonna know all the tricks in the book that those punk kids don't know. You can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that. So put that to use in a win. Finish that marathon in a sprint. But if you're a young punk millennial like me, man, Put that use, put that knowledge to use and win. We can stay hungry, we can use our hustle and our innovation to outthink and outwork people that are stuck. But even better than that is a combination of young ingenuity with older wisdom and prowess. It's a deadly combination that we should be trying to find. Uh, funny story, we have a guy that you guys may or may not know uh, from the hearth industry named Pat Budson. He's, he's, he's been in it for like 40 years. So I'm not joking, Pat showed up at the OHPBA meeting like two and a half, yeah, two years ago, three years ago. I'd never met him before in my life. I started talking to this guy and found out he was retired. He's late 70s and he's just looking to get back in the game part time. So we hired him two days a week and like this guy is the best salesperson I have met in my life. He is the best, period. And it has been deadly pairing someone with his wisdom and knowledge with young, hungry guys. I mean, it has been an amazing combination for any of you guys that have a combination of older wisdom with young hunger. Man, that's, it's good. It's a good spot to be in. We need to be going after it. So, love it or hate it, the guard's changing, and we need to be ready. The next part of the shift that we're on is that the buying experience is changing. <clears throat> we're starting to see technology seeping in, right? So it's crazy to think about how far that we've come. And if we're not using technology to streamline our business, then we're missing out on just incredible things, right? Um, there's people that are totally resistant to, te to technology, that are stuck in their ways. But as we, as we talk about it, we, we just talked about it here in the, in the uh, panel, but your web presence needs to be your number one priority and not just for desktop, but for a mobile phone. We need to be thinking about that. Over 75% of the web traffic that my company gets is on a mobile device, over 75%. And I would guess that it's the same for you guys too. <coughs> so if you don't know web stuff, it's no problem. Find someone who does and pay them to do it. Like Matt was saying, it is worth investing. If you know someone that is good, it is worth making a huge investment to someone that knows that they can do it right. But not all of us are in a position to be able to take that plunge in a blind way. So start with the means that you have, right? 
So I don't think it means necessarily someone cold calls you and they offer you a $20,000 package to revamp your website and do some SEO work for you. But all of us could go to a local community college and get someone through an internship that just graduated from web school, pay them 12 bucks an hour to build the website for their portfolio as they look to go into full-time web development. That might get you three years and you gain enough more business that you can invest into it with a little bit higher budget and go and go and go until maybe someday you're spending 40, $50,000 on your website. Just a little thing that we did was, I found I found someone who could explain it to me so I could understand it. Yeah. And they do quarterly reviews showing me what it is, what they're actually doing for me, which made a big difference. So, in the beginning, I just knew I had a website, I didn't know if it worked. So, these guys actually show me how many leads are coming in, from where, and why. So, that's the one thing, just whoever it is, make sure they take the time to show you that. Yep. So you'll see the value of putting the money into it. Yeah, that's great. And it's a two-way street. So we also need to be continually educating ourselves so that we're not being taken advantage of. But just like the analogy of the financial advisor, right? You need to do some educating, but then find someone who can affirm that and direct you in the best way. So for us as a company, technology has helped see a huge reduction in time. We use iPad apps for everything. You know, we track our previews, track our measurements, our jobs, everything in one spot. We upload them to a drive. Our installers see it prior to the job. And if an inspector has a question down the road or if a homeowner accuses us of faulty work, we have a record to show it. And it also gives us a ton of sweet before and after pictures, right? How many clients want to see before and after pictures? We can do that now so easily with the smartphone and the iPad. So my team used to stress out about writing down the right info for job previews, and it was hard to fill out all the forms. Like we had four different forms to fill out to preview a job to get it to installation. It was a lot of paperwork. But using technology, we combined all of that into a Google Doc, and we found an app that allows all of our pictures, our notes, our measurements to be combined into one email. And this has freed up a huge amount of time for my guys. Just a huge amount. It's increased the success rate of our installs, and customers are happier. It's super expensive, though. It cost us $9 an iPad. Can you believe that? $9. I do it. We had to invest $36. Oh, my gosh. Huh. And I mean, it saved, it didn't save that much. It probably saved uh, 20 hours a month of, of work that, you know, we now we're just twiddling our thumbs doing nothing. What was that called? I'll tell you after this. It is amazing. Well, for anyone, my measures. Go download my measures. I can show you how to use it. It's incredible. Um, so, technology has helped us. It's drastically freed up our time, it's increased the success rate. There's a lot of people that say, well, technology is for the younger generation, right? I didn't, I didn't grow up with it. Well, guess what? You didn't grow up driving, but you figured it out, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is the same thing. And we, you don't have to know it all, but you have to be a learner. So keep your eyes open for things to make your life easier. There's so many things out there that can streamline what we do and make our lives easier. But whether we realize it or not, we are all more technological than we think. So raise your hands here. How many of you guys check your email on your phone? It's a pretty high percentage. <laughs> How many of you guys have checked the weather on your phone? We're getting crazy here. How many of you guys know what a poop emoji is? <laughs> okay, it's like 75% know what a poop emoji is. See, you may not be a digital native, but a digital tourist is okay. <laughs> And even digital tourists can use the technology around them to thrive. And our customers are no different. So they're using technology to become educated. How often do you guys have customers bring in iPads or show you pictures on their smartphones so you can understand a job, right? I mean, every day it happens. So how powerful would it be for your sales team to have their own iPads with before and after pictures? Maybe point of sale information to collect customers' data, to quote them out on the spot. It's gonna build a huge amount of credibility for your consumers to have that because you're stepping into the game that they're, they're already engaged with. This is how we can leverage all the negative stuff we talked about online previously. This is where we can start to leverage that to prove the value of our company. And it's also gonna give us an edge over a lot of people who aren't using it. As we look here, in addition to, to technology, the buying experience is changing. There's no going back, right? We are barely 10 years into the smartphone. We are barely 10 years into it. We 
we have just scratched the surface of what the smartphone can and will do, not to mention Siri and Alexa. How many of you guys have done a Yelp search before you go to a restaurant? Check reviews. How many of you guys have bought books on Amazon? How about an appliance? Washer? Dryer? Not yet? Okay. Um, the reality is that this is real. The buying experience is changing. It's not, it's not going anywhere. It's not like that. So for me, I, I bought a new car pretty recently. And before buying it, I went to CarMax.com to figure out the median price for those cars being sold in my area. I knew the car I wanted and I knew the price. The power is no longer with the dealer. The power is in the hands of the consumer. If I want to go to a restaurant, you have to earn my business with good reviews. You have to. As a consumer, if I want toilet paper, I'm going to Amazon having it delivered to my house. <laughs> if I'm buying a dishwasher, maybe I don't buy it online, but I'm sure doing my research on the make and model before making my purchasing decision. So as a consumer, I have the power. And we have to realize this because for years we've held the power, right? I mean, we're the ones who know what's up. We know how it gets installed. We hold the keys. And if you want to do it my way, tough. I've seen it again and again and again. And there was a time where we could get away with it, but not anymore. That would be no shrinking. Power's in the hands of the consumer, and we need to continue to give it away. So the more that we can make the experience about the consumer, the more that we can make it about them, the more that we're going to win. And that's backwards, right? It's backwards. But we need to give more in value than we take in money. It's the only way to do it. So we need to model our entire business around them and around their buying experience. Because consumers don't want it difficult. They're used to buying on their terms, so why should a fireplace be any different? So let them make the easy decision of what model to pick, and then let us take on the complexity of what that entails, right? They get to make the easy decision, we make the hard decisions behind the scenes. But the more power that we can give away to the consumer, the more that we're gonna sell. And this means education. It means video content, any kind of value play that you can make using technology, online, iPads, even, even in your store still. But any kind of value play that you can make on your consumer is crucial. So think about this. What if your company, whether it was through blogging, through social media, through video content, what if your company was the one educating the consumer when they did their initial research? It's pretty good. You can educate them in your own image. So in the years to come, this isn't only going to continue but it's going, to, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But I would argue it doesn't mean the end of the brick and mortar store. We have to give so much value away that people are compelled to come to us. It's the only way to survive. But this is about them. The consumer holds the keys. And I would argue that the more we can continue to give away power to them, the more value that we, the more valuable we actually become. We actually start to gain leverage as we give away value. It's controversial. I'm 100% I'm on board with it, though. Give that power away. So, if we look at this, one, things have never been better. Two, we are on the verge of a shift. So three, we need to intentionally plan to succeed in the coming years. Everyone ends up somewhere, but not many people get there on purpose. We should be thinking about that. So as a business owner or a manager, you need to find what works. So you need to be trying all kinds of things, like crazy things, different things, not normal status quo things. So as a, as a manager, as an owner, it's our job to be a constant learner, looking at the best practices from inside and outside of our industry and then deploying them in our context to see what's gonna work. So we always need to be honing and innovating our craft, always improving, never satisfied. Now, it doesn't mean that you reinvent the wheel every week or that you fix what's not broken, but we really need to be looking at our businesses like the engine of a car. You're always fine-tuning that thing so it can run better and more efficiently. And the reason that you do this is because if you try enough crazy things, you're going to find what works. So as you try new things, crazy things, different things, a lot's going to fall away, and that's okay because if you manage it right, the good things will stick. And you're actually gonna to start to set yourself up to your employees as an innovator. And your hustle and always improving will be a measuring rod, accountability for them, and also a mark for them to aspire to. 
So for us, we need to be constantly reading business books, podcasting, talking with other owners or managers from within our industry and outside of our industry for best practices and ideas. I would argue though that the biggest thing is get time out of the office to think this through. If there's one thing you take away from this, take two hours a week with no cell phone and a notepad. Get these ideas on paper and brainstorm through what they would look like in your company and then execute. Maybe you do something totally crazy and you implement a sales process. And wouldn't that be nuts? You know, the idea that, that, that my team would actually start an actual process to help the customer the same way every time. I mean, maybe you could, you could take the value-based Xerox process and start there. Maybe you could read Zig Ziglar, put together some of his ideas. Maybe you could come up with a process yourself, but whatever it is, implement it to your team. And it might crash or burn. Great, refine it, try it again. If the idea really sucks, then scrap it. Just move on to what's next. But maybe in doing that, you unlock a sales process that you get buy-in from your company on. And what if that frees up your time to no longer have to micromanage people on the floor because they understand and know what they're gonna do? It's a crazy idea. And it, crazy things don't have to be a sales process. Maybe it's guerrilla marketing, right? So what, what if we canvassed every neighborhood in this strategic zip code with uh, door hangers advertising us? What if we put together a, re a review process to ensure quality control in our jobs so we could actually leverage that as a sales tool? What if we track every door swing that we have so we could figure out if our advertising is working? What if we have a weekly sales report that reports to our team our, our company goals and their individual progress towards it? Some of these ideas are crazy. You know, what would happen if we actually spent some time thinking about it and trying to make it work? Now, to be a successful manager or a leader, you have to have a laser-like focus. So for me, what that looks like is make it so stupidly easy to buy from us that there's no excuse not to. It's my laser focus. It's my mission. So because that's my focus, I'm constantly adjusting and tweaking what we do towards that end goal, right? Make it easy for the consumer. Don't make it hard. Seems like that makes sense. Seems like it's you know, generally a good thing. So I can't deviate from that goal because if I get sidetracked, I'm sacrificing my core objective for something that's peripheral, not from the side. You need that laser focus. So trying crazy things, different things, trying a lot of things. It doesn't all be sales related, but one of the biggest successes that my team put in place last year, it was, it was incredible. It's one of the biggest successes we had it was, a, it was a complex system, really, really complicated to test how busy we are so I, I could gauge their workflow and, and how much they could handle. I, I was actually shocked that we pulled this off, but thankfully, you know, through time and through meditation and everything, we were able to implement it. But I mean, to be able to gauge my team's workload and, 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 and you know, give them a, a proper amount, the system was so complex. This was it. You guys have a pen? I have a pen? Here's the system. Red light, green light, yellow light. If I ask them how they're doing and they tell me they are red, that means I don't give them any more work. And it means I stop what I do and we divvy up their work to other people to get it done. If they go, oh, I'm green, perfect. I got a whole plate full of stuff I'll throw at you and let me know when you get to red. Those three little colors have just drastically changed the way that we work. It's a crazy idea, it's a simple idea, it's a childish idea, but it's a brilliant idea. And at least for us, that's been something that's just transform what we do. It just takes a little bit of good advice and a little bit of thought. Now, we don't have it all figured out. I'm never going to have it all figured out. Because for every one of my brilliant ideas that I've had or stolen, there's been at least five that haven't worked. It's just how it goes. And you have to be strategic with timing and with the method that you use to implement them to your team. But the point is that you as a leader should always be five steps ahead of where your team is going. Scouting what's ahead so that you can lead your company to where you'd like to go. And as you do this, as you innovate and refine and innovate and refine, you're gonna become a giant. It's a recipe for success. And you're gonna find out what works by being a practitioner, not an armchair quarterback. You'll be a practitioner, and that's way better than just reading or dreaming about things. So as you're trying crazy things, what falls away is gonna fall away. But the things that stick, it's gonna be gold. It's really gonna be good for you. Next, if you want to plan to be successful in the coming years, give your power away. We talked about giving it away to the consumer. Now we give it away to our employees. 
This is the hardest step for success, and it cripples businesses in our industry. Right? It's your business after all, right? I mean, you built it. You've invested years of blood, sweat, and tears, not to mention money. And now you're saying you want me to give it away to some employee that doesn't care about it as much as me? Yeah. It's the only way to win. It's the only way to win. If you can't give your power away, you'll never grow further than your arms can reach. I mean, my arms are long, but like, they're not that long. It's way, way better to get five, six more people in that chain with me. If you can't do that, you're gonna get stuck. I mean, seriously, if, if you don't have good enough employees to give away your responsibility to, then you've got big problems on your hands. Or if you have to be the man in every situation, you might get a lot of ego stroking. Probably not gonna have that productive of the workforce. But if you've been trying all kinds of new things, and through humble trial and error, you've formed a great sales process, you've formed an organized workplace and a good customer experience, it's time to give that responsibility away to other people and let them own it. Some of the marks of a good leader are having the heart of a servant and the heart of a teacher. So if you can spend the next 12 months coaching and training your team, your people, to 100% buy in on the methods that you put in place, it's gonna pay off. Employees that don't take ownership of things are not engaged employees. Huh, it's hard to figure out why that is. So how do they, how do they take ownership of things? You have to give it to them. If you don't give them ownership, they'll never be able to take it. So as you give your power away, you're gonna see your business take off. And sure, there's bumps in the road. Your people will mess up. I mess up all the time. Of course my people mess up too, it happens. And sometimes they can't do something as good as you. But all of that can turn into learning opportunities where they actually learn to own the process and not make that mistake again. And giving your power away is gonna do something really interesting in your company because it will separate the wheat from the chaff. People are either, either gonna step up to the plate or they're gonna fall away. And this is actually gonna help you gauge how much to invest in those employees as you set that bar. And think about this. How many goals have you failed on? And how many ideas have you never done anything with because you didn't have the time? The market doesn't care. So give your power away and your people and buy your time back. After that, you're ready to scale the company. Scale. If you've built the system, now's the time to take it to the next level. This is the dream of a business owner, right? Scale, scale, scale. But now you've got the system in place. You have a team formed that can run it. Now it's your job to go find new opportunities to deploy it. Maybe it means more stores. Maybe it means business development with contractors or opportunities for partnership with other businesses. But these are things that you have to be doing. This is when it's time to work on your business and not in it. That makes sense? We're gonna hear about that in a little bit in the Workforce Coalition video. It's so good, work on your business and not in it. Because opportunity's out there. And if you really believe that things haven't been better, then now's the time to do it. So invest in growing your company while the competition's stuck with their heads in the sand. And if you've succeeded in building something that's bigger than yourself, that's owned from within, this is the time for you to take it to the next level. Maybe it means it's time to sell the business. You can actually go out and court a potential buyer, prove to them the value that the business is worth. Maybe you could join a networking group with other entrepreneurs. It could mean that the pet idea that you've always had for additional business can finally be put into action, but you'll never be able to do it if you don't make the time. You have to create the time by giving that power away. So for us, we need to believe in ourselves, right? I mean, we've come this far. We have amazing products. A lot of us have great systems in place. We've come this far. Now's the time to see it through. This is an industry that we need to be in love with. We're in the relationship business and people can sniff out BS from a mile away if your heart isn't in it. Customers know it, but we can get back to that. So I would challenge us to remember why we fell in love with this industry. Because if not, the coming years are gonna be difficult, right? Things are changing, they're not going back. But let's intentionally take this next step and leave our mark on the industry forever. How's that sound? Cool, thank you guys.